she didn't agree with the fact that I started showing vagina on OnlyFans because that affected her brand. And uh, I think her exact words were, that's disgusting and gross. Your wardrobe screams fatherless. Do you have more trust Honestly, in that top side than people? Disgusting. How would you really think that's your father? Nice. Just saying, why did you get the attention you wanted? You need Jesus. That's offensive. All right, hello everyone. It is Deals back with That's Offensive, capital OF, because I'm an OnlyFans whore, obviously. Um, I just wanted to start this episode off by talking about a little flashback I had of my freshman year. And to set this scene, when I was a freshman, I was blacked out after a frat party um, in the back of an Uber with a man. And like, when I say blacked out, like when I was a freshman, I was like very unwell with my drinking habits. And um, my freshman year was definitely my hoe year. I remember watching Blue Mountain State and thinking, all right, I need to be at home my freshman year because that's what they all did. And you guys don't base your whole college freshman year on a satire TV show. Um, you don't need to be a hoe. Um, anywho, months later, I had one of those flashback. Like, you know those blackout flashbacks where you're like, did, is this a dream or did it really happen? And... I was like, I don't think this is. So I turned to my friend and I was like, yo, I think I blew a guy in the back of an Uber, but I'm not entirely sure. And my friend was like, no, Adelia, there's no way you did that. I was like, no, I literally blew him in the bushes. And then we got on the Uber and I asked the Uber driver if it was okay. And he said, as long as he could watch. So unless I'm having like really, really vivid dreams that matched up with that night, I think it's one of those like blackout flashbacks. <laughs> well, um, this just goes to show how much a vibrator has changed my life because before my vibrator my horniness just like it ruled my life like it was like my I had a fuck a guy literally had a fuck a guy like every weekend like I would fuck friends I'd fuck homies frat bros etc I got chlamydia I'd fuck guys from tinder and like none of these guys as a college student were genuinely making me come. So it's like my vagina always felt like it was pulsing where I needed to get dick. Like even right after I got dick, like I would have to get dick again because none of the guys were like satisfying me. And I think part of it too was like, I just came back from rehab in Utah where my sexuality was like very repressed for a long period of time. Like I wasn't allowed to be sexual at all where I had to wear like shorts that always went down to my knees and like, shirts that barely showed my elbows um, because they didn't want me to be sexual and then I got a farmer's hand and I really hated that but when I went to college I was like I need to go balls to the walls and fuck all these men but um <laughs> you know it did get a little messy because guys would get mad at me being like why did you hook up with my friends and I was like well you didn't respond and your friend was here um but I was like kind of toxic when I was horny um but now I do have my vibrator and I really don't need a man again I haven't needed a man in a very very long time. Um, it's actually crazy because uh, I was in Aspen with my friend Kelly. Shout out Kelly. And um, she was like fucking me with a dildo and I was able to get like my big ass wand vibrator. So for those who don't know what a wand vibrator is, it's like those big massive like massage machines. And like she was able to get an angle where she was fucking me with like me using my vibrator <laughs> that a man has never been able to do because usually a man's body is like too much in the way if they're like fucking you and you're on your back like to have a whole wand get there. So I think girls are doing it better. Um, but this is all segueing into me talking about setting boundaries today. And uh, it was really hard for me to set boundaries when my vagina is yelling louder than my brain is. Um, so I wanted to go over today my struggles of setting boundaries because up until recently, I let people walk all over me <laughs> and what went into that process of setting boundaries. So of course, like most issues we have uh, later on in life, it stems from childhood trauma. And ever since I was a kid, I somehow had to be like the adult with my parents and just have to communicate with them and uh, never, I don't know, I, I would just, oh, I'm gonna redo that part. Ever since I was a kid, I somehow had to be the adult with my parents. I would try saying I didn't like doing something, like for example, Girl Scouts, because I was bullied pretty hard in, bull, uh, in Girl Scouts, and my dad would say, this is gonna look so good on college resume, and you can't quit because this is great socialization, blah, 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 and like would literally throw a tamper t temper tantrum until he got his way. So I always felt like I had to be like the calm, reasonable adult and just fold over to like not have conflict in the house. Um, and I would tell him I hated like skiing because I frankly hate the cold, and he would be like, well, your future husband is gonna thank me 
me for teaching you how to ski. And skiing will help you <laughs> relate to your future bosses better. Like, any of that shit fucking matters to me. And I don't know, like, I mean, living in Arizona and California, I have yet to have an experience when I did work corporate where my boss was like, let's go skiing for the day, Adelia. <laughs> like, what was he thinking? Also, let's just say my future husband wants me to go skiing. Like, no, <laughs> no, I, I, I really don't care. He can have his alone time and I can have mine. And, um... My mom would usually agree with me, but would be, like, too scared to fight with my dad to stand up to him for me. And, like, when I stood up for myself, he would threaten to stop paying for everything because I was, like, you know, so ungrateful for the opportunities he was giving me. <laughs> and, you know, on this podcast, I do like to play both sides and take accountability where I can because he did pay for a lot of things. And in his eyes, uh, th like the world was my oyster with his money, and uh, to me, the money was great, and I very much appreciate the extra help I got, but it doesn't really excuse his, like, childish behavior growing up and his lack of accountability, so I quickly learned to let people walk all over me, to people please, to, like, never say no. <laughs> um, it seemed to cause more problems than solutions because I was often, like, very, very unhappy because I could barely communicate when something was bothering me. Um, during college, this especially <laughs> affected me during relationships because I would start, like, hooking up with a guy, and then I would start, you know, liking him, and I could never voice that I wanted to be exclusive. And I never really did voice it until I was like really blacked out. You know, alcohol really has helped me in that instance, but you know, it's just a crutch at the end of the day. But uh, with my ex one time, I like told him I was coming to his frat. So when I got there, I thought I saw him holding hands with another girl. And as soon as he saw me, he like ran over and was like, Adelia, like completely ditched her, then brought me to his room. And when he closed the door, I was like, are you fucking other girls or are you not? And he was like, well, when do I have time to hook up with other girls? And I, now I realize he like wasn't saying no, but he was trying to like imply no so that he wasn't technically lying. But um, I basically bullied lead him into dating me at that point. <laughs> I was like, we can't keep doing this if you're going to keep hooking up with other girls. And he agreed. Um, I don't think he wanted to, but he agreed. And I, I, he, you know, was still hooking up with other girls anyways, just had to be sneakier about it. Um, and even though I was drunk, it was definitely a step in the right direction because before him, I would be hooking up with other guys and I wouldn't be able to tell them how I felt and I would continue getting butt hurt when they'd fuck other girls or not take me seriously when I literally couldn't even communicate with them that I liked them. <laughs> like, I think in my head I was like, I am giving them the glance. <laughs> like, do they not understand I like them because of the way I'm looking at them? Um, yeah, no, you, you, gotta, you gotta express yourself a little more than that. So big steps here, <laughs> but I'd also kind of be scared. I'd be like, well, what if they think I'm moving too fast? Or what if they think I'm crazy that I like them and wanna like settle down? But um, now that I'm you know getting a little more mature and I'm getting a little older, it's like I'd rather someone think I'm fucking crazy or moving too fast than waste another year of my time on some mediocre man who's never gonna commit or can't like, you know, move in the appropriate steps or a woman but I have yet to have like romantic feelings for a woman I've just had like sexual feelings for women so yeah I guess man or woman we'll see um I think another monumental moment for me was uh when my dad sent me paragraphs this was also in college it was my senior year he sent me paragraphs calling me a whore for wearing like a black tube top a black score I was wearing black heels that like they were thigh high heels with like a black fuzzy jacket. Um, and I posted a photo on Instagram of me like going out. It wasn't a bikini. My tits were not out. My ass was put away. I think like a little bit of my midriff was showing. And he <laughs> sent these paragraphs being like, I thought you were going to stop posting slutty pictures on Instagram. No one's going to take you seriously. You're never going to get a job. You're never going to make money. It was just like paragraph on paragraph and paragraph. And I waited a few days and then I pulled my dad aside since the whole house was like a little shaken up from the incident. And I was like, all right, well, we need to talk. And I asked my dad how he thought it made me feel when he called me a whore. And I proceeded to say, um, oh, and then he said that, oh, like, you don't think you deserve to be called a whore when you were wearing those outfits? <laughs> and I was like, 
<laughs> no, absolutely not, because I am your daughter, and it's not the fucking 1800s. Um, and I told him it was completely inappropriate inappropriate for him to continuously call his daughter a whore because, you know, it's happened multiple, multiple times. And um, it ended, like, I told him that if he continued to talk to me like that, then we just wouldn't have a relationship. And he agreed to be nicer to me, and for a little bit he was, but obviously it didn't last uh, because, you know, I have him blocked. I have him blocked. But it did work for a little bit. And mind you, when I was, like, in high school, middle school, <laughs> elementary school, I was never able to set, like, a single boundary with people. So even, like, these small little victories were such a big deal to me and took so much courage. <laughs> and, like, it would take, like, hours of overthinking, like, every which way the direction could go. Um, <laughs> So let's fast forward to the year before I made an OnlyFans. Um, I was like, I was very, very depressed. Um, I was like throwing up from just the amount of anxiety I had. That's actually how I found out I have IBS because one of the symptoms of IBS is when you, um, when you're really stressed out, you yak, <laughs> and that's what I do. But uh, I had a job with a boss man who could not control his anger, like borderline just a really scary dude. I also had another coworker who just always liked to fight and the combo of these two every day was just like, you know, it was it was a difficult working environment. Um the angry boss man would yell and scream and blame the world for his problems and would really take it out on his staff. Like, I think he ended up getting fired like a week before I quit because he like punched a wall and threw his phone across <laughs> across the room. Um, not, you know, just a casual working environment. Um, he wasn't kind, he wasn't patient, and he definitely wasn't good at being a boss. Um, I remember it took me weeks of preparation to talk to him. Uh, he would yell at me for things he didn't explain, get mad over things that were frankly out of my control or his control. And finally, like, during... Uh, oh, wow. That's... <laughs> That's really cute. Um, finally, during our weekly meeting, I had the balls to tell him that I didn't appreciate the way he talked to me. I told him that when he yells at me, it makes me feel like I'm not good at what I do and I'm like very demotivated to work. Um, he then proceeds to say, well, when do I specifically tell you you're not good at work? And I was, <laughs> do you guys like this impression I'm doing? I don't know where this voice was coming from, but it's like my new a man impression voice <laughs> but I was like well you don't specifically tell me you're not good at your job but your tone definitely insinuates that I am and the way you treat me definitely insinuates I am I also explained how important words of affirmation are for someone like me to do well in a working environment because if someone is always telling me everything that I'm doing wrong then I'm just like well I'm bad at my job anyways and I get very demotivated but if someone is like you go Adelia you're doing great but you could use a little improvement here but here's where you're doing well I was explaining like that works a lot better and um after that he actually treated me better than he treated any of the other fucking girls like, I do think that he has a little bit of an internal hatred of woman, maybe because of his mom. Like, I'm not his therapist, so I just have, like, a little bit of an inkling. But he really didn't like woman, and uh, he treated me the best out of any of the staff. And he was, like, very, he, you know, he was a scary man. He literally punched a wall and threw his phone against, like, threw his phone across the room. So it was very hard to stand up for him, but that was one of, like, the first times I proudly and successfully set a boundary. Um... <laughs> Here's one of the unsuccessful times I tried setting <laughs> boundaries with my roommates at the time. So I feel like those who listen to my podcast or know who I am or even follow me on Instagram know how much I love my sleep. I frankly need my sleep because I just found out I have severe mold poisoning um, and I've had it for a while. So if I don't get my sleep, I literally feel dead because it's, you know, I'm living with a chronic illness here. <laughs> so my roommates would have people over a lot of weeknights when I was working like 10 plus hour days at my logistics job and sometimes people would be over till four in the morning and I woke up like all the fucking time pretty much every time they had people over and I'd even be nice and I would text them like hey can you be quiet close the door ask people to leave and they would ignore my texts and keep partying so <laughs> imagine this being your life like Sunday Monday Tuesday it like it definitely wasn't every day but like three or four weeknights a week and I really tried being nice and setting boundaries at first and I'm like I'm sure you're not meaning to do this but please stop um <laughs> One of them would always apologize and like <sighs> the other would be like, well, we pay rent. So why do we have to accommodate to your sleeping schedule? And this was so ironic because 
she asked me to stop closing the bathroom door when I pee in the middle of the night because it would wake her up. So I stopped doing that. But when it came to my sleep, all of a sudden, like, shit didn't matter. So I threatened to move out several times before they agreed to stop having parties on weeknights. And they'd still have them on weekends, but I would just travel or try to be away because, I mean, they would invite people over who stole from my room, who were disrespectful. Um, and when I moved out, like... I ended up blocking one of the girls, uh, you know, the one who kind of gaslit me because I constantly stated what my boundaries were and what I wasn't comfortable with and she didn't care. And I think my biggest issue back then is when I would state my like boundary or try to communicate how I felt, she would gaslight me or deny that they were doing what the, like they were doing and would make me feel crazy. So especially like a few years ago when like I would tell someone how they were making me feel Actually, this was like a year and a half ago, two years ago, yeah. So, no, it was like a year and a half ago, so not even that long ago, but even then, it's like when someone, if I would tell someone I'm feeling this way and they would rebuttal where they were like, well, you shouldn't be feeling this way or that's not actually what happened or, you know, try to change the story, it's like I would start doubting myself and I would start doubting my feelings and I would start wondering if my experiences were even valid and I would get so, like, angry and confused because I wasn't being taken seriously even though I felt like I was doing everything I could to be taken seriously. And um, about a year and a half ago, I think it was, like, August-ish, I had to spend a lot of time alone to figure out if my feelings were valid and if I was overreacting, like she stated. And I spent several weekends just alone trying to, like, process my feelings, try to process my emotions, and, um, you know, kind of just being depressed. But I finally got to, like, the realization, like, no, I am not being crazy. Like, I was not the issue, and, like, this needs to be tackled or I was moving out. So setting boundaries when it comes to roommates can be so fucking hard because you live with them and you see them almost every day. So it's like very scary to go up to them and be like, hey, like, can you please stop doing this? Because what if they start like acting petty or, act, you know, but like you can't really act in the what ifs. You have to like put yourself first and set boundaries to other people to like protect your peace. Um, to prevent situations like this, just to be fair, you can't always like prevent situations like this, but interview your roommates and like interview them thoroughly to go over like sleep schedules, if they like to party, what they plan to do, um, what time they have work every morning, because if your work schedules coincide, your sleep schedules will probably coincide, etc. cetera. Um, just to avoid issues like that, which is not something I did, I was just like, you know, people from college, like, sure, be my roommates, but I also went to a college full of alcoholics, <laughs> so I probably should have thought thought my decisions a little better, um, but don't you guys worry, with my OnlyFans money, I have two apartments now, one of them does have mold, so basically just one apartment, and one I'm still somehow paying rent for, <laughs> and I will promise you guys that I will never have a roommate again. Um, so let's fast forward to me quitting my job to make an OnlyFans. I started a podcast and I had a podcast partner. Um, we also had people managing the podcast. I think working on this last podcast and the people working with me taught me more about boundaries than anyone else could have. Um, I definitely started noticing issues like the first few weeks of starting my old podcast, but I didn't really say anything because I was honestly very, very nervous to set boundaries um, with a new person. And, you know, I, I was feeling like I was doing everything to get it set up, from coming up with a name, to finding a podcast studio, to the artwork, to the little jingle, to writing the scripts, to finding a sound engineer, etc. And, like, frankly, it would be extremely unfair for me to put all the blame on her because I wasn't vocalizing what I had issues with or speaking up because I felt too nervous to tell someone that, you know, I was doing more work than them, like... In my head, I was like, well, what is this person going to think when I tell them I'm doing more work and that it's unfair? And in my head, I was like, I wouldn't like to be told that. But also, you know, it was a working relationship where it was like 50-50. So it was something I should have brought up. And I was so scared of telling someone that I was working with that, you know, they were doing something wrong because I didn't want to jeopardize the working relationship. Although by not speaking up, I was like hurting myself a lot. You know, I, th I thought about going off and doing my own thing for a while, but I didn't have the confidence in myself to do it for a very long time until I just had my final straws working with my old podcast partner. 
Um, I, I really didn't start speaking up until about two months in, and I think she definitely knew I was scared of her because I was very scared of her and very scared to confront issues with her because she doesn't really take well to that kind of stuff. But um, when I did speak up, I was often met with gaslighting and how I caused her to act that way. Um, you know, the way she did, and we rarely came to mutual agreements, and it was very unhealthy for me to stay in. My issue started just with the working relationship when we weren't splitting the cost for podcast studios, employees who edited the podcast, the Airbnbs we would rent for photo shoots, etc. Um, you know, she would sometimes pay and sometimes blow it off for, you know, stuff like that. I, I would also write the scripts and she wouldn't contribute but then criticize me for how bad the script was. And I was having a lot of trouble speaking up and telling her to split the cost with me or like split the scripts with me. And part of me was very reluctant about the prices because get this, like I was like, I don't want to be tacky or annoying asking for money. <laughs> and it gave me anxiety every time I sent her a receipt to split shit. And don't get me wrong, she did pay me back for a lot, but there's still a lot she hasn't paid me back for and probably will never. But it's fine because I'd rather just have that relationship ended than to get that money back. But um, with the script, I was nervous to ask her um, to contribute more as well because I knew like, I would get it done in a punctual manner. And when I got it done, it was thorough. It was well thought out. Like, it was pages long. We had tons of stuff to talk about. And giving someone else the power to write the script and leave the possibility of it being, of it not being done on time or missing stuff or, like, being done so last minute that I don't have a chance to, like, review it. Like, that was the shit that was, like, scaring me about getting her to, like, contribute more. And that was how it started. But I did try setting boundaries about two months in. Um... The biggest instance that stands out to me is when um, I hired a manager to help me out with OnlyFans and he tried to exploit me. He had me showing my vagina before I was comfortable and wanted to push my boundaries so we could make more money. And I fired him very, very quickly. So I wanted to do a podcast where I talked about that and how to look out for bad management and what some of the red flags could be um, so, you know, girls don't get taken advantage of as much in the industry. And uh, we were supposed to film at 10 a.m., on a Sunday, I believe, and we went out Saturday night and had some drinks, so I told her we should be back by 10 p.m. to show up ready for the podcast the next day. We got back to my apartment, and I fell asleep, and um, I guess she left and was up till 4 a.m. and didn't get back to the podcast till about 15 minutes before we were supposed to leave to record the podcast. Um, before we got to the podcast studio, I did mention to her that I didn't like the way she was talking about me to the people we were with the night before. I felt as though she was belittling me and making fun of me in front of other people, and I didn't appreciate that. And she apologized, and that was that. Um, we got to the podcast studio, and we're late. And I have to say, like, that day was such a frustrating day because we didn't stay on script, nor did it have any kind of flow. And this was my first, like, inclination, like, I have to say something today. And I was like, yo, this is incredibly unprofessional. Um, and I said I wouldn't be paying for the podcast studio since I showed up unprepared, and she didn't. And uh, <laughs> this was met... This was met with the most gaslighting I've ever really seen from a person. She started saying that I should have never signed with a management company in the first place and how dare I do that to her when she had a bad experience with a completely different management company. And I was honestly like so confused. I was trying to connect the dots in my head. Like how is me signing with someone that she's never met before related to her having a bad experience with a different manager? Like I was, I was just shocked and confused. Like it, it was just so unrelated that I didn't understand where her head was at. It, it just seemed like she wanted something to be mad at me about and the fight got really bad since when I did try to hold her accountable the whole blame got placed on me and somehow this whole fight was my fault and it, it ended up being like a repeated pattern um, basically the whole working relationship and uh, she was staying with me and uh, she started a group text with my roommates <laughs> um, saying that we got in a big fight and that she needed to hide in their rooms and of course, the roommate I'm homies with was like, yo, Adelia, like, she's trying to talk shit about you. <laughs> and um, I was like, what are, you, what are you doing in my apartment then with my roommates? 
Uh, she then proceeds to like talk shit to my roommates and my college best friends saying I had a problem with mushrooms, which was weird because she also took them and how embarrassing I was to go out with, how like none of the guys like me, how she didn't agree with the fact that I started showing vagina on OnlyFans because that affected her brand. And uh, I think her exact words were that's disgusting and gross. And um, she also said that she was like the pretty face of the podcast to multiple of my friends. And mind you, these were all my friends, like not even I introduced her to all of these people. So all of them told me and I told her, like, you need to get out of my apartment, dude. Like, if that's the way you're going to speak to me and if this is the way that you're going to, like, treat me, then, you know, get a hotel. So she got a hotel and uh, on Monday we she invited me over for business meetings like nothing happened. I brought up that I knew she what she was saying and she blatantly denied it and tried saying that my friends were actually the ones talking shit. Um, she did this with so many people. I often felt isolated and like I didn't have many people to turn to because what she said was always very convincing and made me feel as though all of these people really didn't like me because when I would bring up, oh, so that, you know, I, I heard you were saying this about me. She'd be like, oh my gosh, this person doesn't even like you. And, you know, her stories were always very, very convincing and it did like isolate me a lot. And I was beyond hurt and confused, especially since, um, you know, we had a podcast teaching girls how to like empower themselves and to embrace their sexuality especially because for someone like me growing up so religious growing up with the parents I did growing up you know having to go to rehab in like a very Mormon part of Utah like I, I really wanted people to embrace their sexuality because I was starting to embrace my sexuality and it was just so hurtful and harmful that she was shaming me for mine to my peers and um, she constantly denied it and said that, you know, the other girls were coming to her saying that they were embarrassed of my content and uh, that she would never say anything like that. And I feel like I should also mention that people who have a problem with the content I put out are most likely projecting and have no place judging my content. Like to even see my content, you have to go subscribe to my OnlyFans, put in that effort. It's not like I'm posting vagina pictures on Twitter, on Snapchat for like people who aren't expecting it to see. It's like you really, you have to pay for that shit, you know? And it really isn't anyone places but mine to have a problem with the content I put out unless it's harming other people, which you know it isn't. And you know, like, it's not anyone else's place to label it embarrassing or too sexual. Like, that's truly my place to decide and my place to decide, like, what content I want to put out there. Um, so after that blowout fight, you know, I got to take accountability because it was really hard for me to set boundaries with her since I, I just, I felt very manipulated and I felt like the, the truth was constantly warped and I, I felt like I was somehow having to take the accountability for her actions plus my own. And, um, you know, my anxiety started getting really bad. I would try to give constructive feedback at podcast meetings, such as not talking over guests, and it would all just blow up in my face. I would ask her to be on time because if she was late, you know, the podcast would go late, and I had a dog waiting at home who probably had to go pee, and I was always met with so much resentment and fight that I felt as though I just couldn't set boundaries, and the right thing would have been to walk away when I tried to set boundaries, and they weren't being met. I mean, I, I really just, I felt so, so stuck and I felt like I couldn't leave. We were 50-50 on the LLC. Um, I didn't want to give up the podcast since I came up with the name, uh, the idea, the brand, et cetera. It was like my baby. And it was I, I didn't want to let go of that because I was holding on to the idea of what it could be. But it would never live up to like what my fantasies were because, frankly, it was just such a toxic working relationship. And for all of you out there, like you should never – you should never not do something because, like, you should never not break off a relationship, a friendship, et cetera, because of the fantasy of what it could be. Like, what it is right now is probably the best it's going to get. Um, I, I literally waited until I was at my breaking point to the end of our working relationship. I was, I was constantly crying. I was frustrated. I got really bad stomach issues because of how stressed I was. And it's not healthy to constantly walk on eggshells. And this was, like, a huge decision that I spent a long time making and it was different than setting boundaries with friends because like my money was also on the line. I was scared of making less money, paying for lawyer fees, like a potential lawsuit, like what was going to happen, how I was going to start a new podcast, etc. And I I mean I was I was terrified. Like I didn't believe in myself enough at the time 
to know I was going to do a good job on my own, I didn't have that kind of confidence. I didn't have that kind of will in myself. Like, I I was also really scared because I already knew the shit she was saying about me before I decided to end the working relationship. So I was really scared of what the consequences could be after. And, you know, there was a lot of other shit that did happen, but I don't want this podcast to be seen as me talking shit. Like, this podcast is about how I learned to set boundaries and how I learned to move forward. And, you know, like, you, you shouldn't wait until your breaking point to end something that isn't working out for you. Um, I ended up offering her a buyout, to which she said she would do for $100,000. And um, it was not worth $100,000. So I finally just decided to man up and do my own podcast. <laughs> Wait, why did I even say man up? Hold on. I'm just going to backtrack a little bit. I know I've been really serious like for the past however many minutes, but what about like woman up? Because I feel like women have been really strong recently or just, you know, find my strength. <laughs> I don't want to, you know, I have, we got to empower women here. But um, after I sent this letter and made my decisions, I, I fully went into depression for like two or three months. It was like all of the trauma hit me at once and I ended like oh, when I ended it I was I was just finally allowed to process everything that happened and I was also like shocked like I was in shock that I was even able to like set a boundary and stick with it um that was probably the most I've ever stuck with a boundary in my life and I I even questioned my choices and I wanted to know if I was making the right decision and I didn't feel like my intuition was talking to me very strongly at that point. And um, like I mentioned before, I was really scared of the repercussions, so I blocked her on everything and made sure all communication was through an email where my old managers would help me reply to her. Because at the time, and I, I still feel this way a little bit, but I was very cowardly and it gave me a lot of anxiety to face my issues fa- like head on. Um, and I've always struggled with not being able to like fa- <laughs> Uh, I w- I've always struggled with facing things head on. Like, I remember I used to like text something really risky to like a guy I liked or something like that. I would throw my phone across the room, not check it for hours until one of my roommates was home. So my roommate could check my text messages for me. And then half the time, the guy wouldn't even respond. So <laughs> it just shows like my mindset of being able to like really face things like that. Um, And it's almost like I would rather live in like a false reality than deal with my issues. But uh, towards the end of my depression phase, after ending things with her, I started listening to my intuition a lot more. And it made it a lot easier for me to set boundaries um, when I didn't like something. Oh my gosh. Um, (laughs) When I didn't like something, it still took me a while, but I started facing things head on. I, I always hyped things up more in my head than what would happen in reality. Like, I I would feel like, um, like, I would feel like someone was walking all over me, and I would finally be like, this isn't okay in my head, but I would think of all the bad things that could happen if I, if I went to go talk to them, and nine times out of ten, nothing bad would happen. It It would just be a conversation. Like, I have my feelings hurt because of this, and they would be like, oh my gosh, I had no idea you had your feelings hurt, or, you know, it would just be like such an honest communication, and if the people don't take it, the right way, then it seems like it's just more their issue than yours. And um, what I'd be scared of as well would just be them gaslighting me or not respecting my boundary, which if they aren't doing that, then like, why would I want them in my life in the first place? And it's been hard in the past to recognize in the moment when I am being manipulated or gaslit. And it's a scary feeling to not know if someone is being genuine and if someone isn't. There was only one instance for me so far in my little journey of setting boundaries, uh, where the opposite happened, where they did not take it well. And I was so proud of myself for literally just standing up for myself. Um, I was working with people for a while, and um, they were 100% taking advantage of me. And I didn't realize it because they were such good friends of mine that I didn't think it was possible for them to. And um, I signed an awful and very predatory contract where they were trying to take money from me forever. Um, 
And I didn't realize any of this until I started noticing, you know, their work was kind of subpar and they weren't doing everything that they said they were going to do. And I brought it up to them being like, this, this, and this isn't right. And um, they tried arguing with me on why their work wasn't subpar and why they deserved to be paid what they did. And um, I ended up having to fire them because I wasn't going to be gaslit anymore and I can start like recognizing the signs of being gaslit. Um, I really listened to my intuition on the situation, but there were still other voices in my head that's like, they're family, like how could you fire them? Like they really cared about you. And frankly, family, I mean, my family would, but family that matters <laughs> won't gaslight you when you bring up issues with their work. Or, you know, I found out I was paying them like five times more than the industry standard. And my old podcast partner, like that really hurt, but this one hurt harder because my judgment was so easily clouded by people I, I considered my close friends. And I'm usually able to pick up on red flags very quickly, but they positioned everything like, we're family to you, and like they were the only people who were going to have my back in an industry that's so full of vultures. And um, a, li a little, little secret about me is my biggest fear is literally dying alone. So like that, that pulled at my heartstrings a lot that these people were trying to position themselves as family to me only to try to fuck me over and get my money. And like, these are the people who are going to have my back and I needed to trust their opinion. And you know, <sighs> that was, it was such a rough experience, but setting boundaries is truly like a muscle that you just need to re uh, exercise regularly because it's something that's like so, so, so difficult to do, especially if you grew up with like parents who gaslit you or you never felt like you were taken seriously or that your feelings weren't valid. It becomes a muscle that you really do have to exercise regularly. And truthfully, I don't even blame my old partner for everything that happened. The truth is I let that happen and I didn't hold my ground. And like I should have walked away the second my boundaries were being disrespected. And, you know, I became extremely anxious and depressed because it was too hard for me to walk away, which is just ridiculous because, like, I should have had the strength to walk away knowing it would be easier in the first place. And I stayed in an emotionally abusive partnership because I was too scared of, like, what would happen if I let go. But um, it's always better to let go and do what's best for you. And it took me a few months to get my confidence back. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I'm still working on that shit. Um, I really started setting boundaries and being loud about them in October and November, and that's when I let go of uh, the rest of the team. And it was very fucking difficult, and I'm still emotional about it. I don't know if you can like tell in my voice, but this is definitely a different inflection than the voice I usually have, <laughs> so maybe. But, uh, but these were like the best decisions I think I've made, and they've opened so many doors for me, just really going out and doing things on my own. I've had friends that I stopped talking to, people I stopped working with, and um, I'm very proud of myself for being able to do that because a few years ago, I wasn't able to do that. Even like six months ago, I wasn't really able to do that. And I went from being someone who would let people walk all over me, treat me poorly, use me, to somehow, uh, be a person who's able to stand my ground and, um, you know, it's okay to let go of people to protect my peace. Um, sometimes, you know, I get sad because I don't feel like I'm as easygoing as other girls, but not everyone needs to be this, like, fun, easygoing person. Um, someone else could have gone through the same experience I did and not had any issues, and someone else may have had more issues, and sometimes I've struggled with this comparison of other people and you know, that, that's not very healthy because what others are able to withstand is not comparable to yours. So when I tell you guys that setting that boundary, although it might seem super, super hard in the moment, is 1,000 times easier than the emotional turmoil <laughs> it'll cause in the future, it's, it's really the truth. So set your boundaries because the problems will just get worse and your mental health will go to shit. Um... I'm just going to end this with Protect Your Peace Man, <laughs> and I'm going to plug myself. Uh, find me on it's deals, I -T -S -D -E -E -L -Z .com, um for all of my socials, and please subscribe to my OnlyFans and pay me tons of money. Thank you.